Time to rehome an orchid. And we're gonna be tackling the Brassarola flagellaris. Why not go with the most complicated one and make our mistakes along the way before we tackle the easy one and work our way up? And as per usual, I have another one of those videos where I'm going to take advantage of your presence because you being here is gonna help me stay focused. So thank you so much for that in advance. We're going to start over here in the shade because this is a fiddle, as you can see. My intention is not to make this a pretty, pretty looking mount. My intention is to do as little damage to the orchid as I possibly can. And yes, I'm going to try and see what I can get out of this mesh right here. My hob filter material, not mesh as in SH mess, but the mesh the structure of my hop filter. I'm going to try and see what I can salvage. If things go downhill and I'm starting to feel antsy and I'm feeling as though I'm doing more damage than good, I'm not going to be picking off everything. The orchid has priority and then whatever stays on the orchid goes onto the mount. And the reason I'm starting here is because it's still shaded. I'm standing and I believe that's a good thing. It gives me a little bit more <laughs> balance. And also, once we get to mounting the orchid, I hope by that time, the sun will have dissipated a little bit. These placemats, they are for dining tables where you put your plates on. That is the round structure that you see here. That was the mount before I placed it on another structure which was taken from a Tupperware. It's the surface plate type thing for the Tupperware sandwich box so your sandwiches don't get soggy. You can see how brittle it is. So I kind of think I want to work that in our favor at least to get that off and get a grip into other things. Working my way in gradually. It is not my intention to remove all of it. I'm only going to take off as much as I can to then be able to maybe even use parts of what I have left to secure the mount. Because yes, while fishing line is helpful, the size of the mount will determine <laughs> that I don't want fishing line going everywhere in a huge massive circle around the back. So I'm trying to think a little bit of the aesthetics without hurting the orchid and it's going to look a little bit weird but I hope that in the long term this orchid is going to be okay on that mount. So it's good that this is already brittle, it's lasted a good four years. My intention with the inorganic mounts was just to keep building, keep building. I wasn't going to care about any of this falling apart etc because the next structure was behind it and then continue along those lines. The problem I'm having though is with the root system in my super dry climate, you can see aerial roots, lots of them, and I will continue probably to have aerial roots, but hopefully not as many, and hopefully eventually the orchid will attach herself to that mount so that I can water her more easily without risking the tiny structures of the new growth. I'm also not intending to cut off all the hob filter material because that is still going to be my substitute for sphagnum moss. So whatever sticks stays. I just want to get a better idea of what's going on around and underneath to know what part of the white structure, the grating, I can cut off. So the orchid was like this, orientation on the mount, like this. On the new mount with the cork, she's gonna be like this. So that's where I'm sort of looking now, where do I cut the white off? Or do I just leave it as is? 
I think I can cut the lower bit off just a tad. You see, I have a growing root tip right there. That's awesome. If I can get that to grow through, down and out, this is still a viable root, even though it doesn't look like it. It may be sacrificed because this orchid will start growing new roots shortly. The new growth's already underway. So uh, you see, I cut into a good root right here. I hope that's in focus. It's all a little bit of a haphazard video. And if you're still here, thank you so much. A like for effort would be wonderful. <laughs> There are no more roots except for this one, at least in this part. When you think the whole intention of the inorganic mounts was to never disturb the orchid, I didn't bank on the fact that the inorganic mounts would work so, so well, that the orchid grew so, so well, and her needs are increasing. <laughs> I know, right? Isn't every intention for a setup the intention to grow an orchid really well? But seeing as this was kind of an experiment, I had nothing to fall back on from experience. So <laughs> here we are. Now, there is so much going on in the back here. So what I'm going to do is bring the mount over to the shade and see how it's going to work out. I know, right? Told you this is about the orchid, not about aesthetics. Don't hate me for what you're seeing here. Ideally, just buy a new orchid and do this. I do want all those roots in the back. So I'm looking now because I'm going to be drilling nails into the cork all throughout this structure right here. That's how we're going to secure her. You see the size of the mount? <laughs> yeah, it looks like overkill, but it's not. You won't know until you do it, right? Okay, let's just do it then. I got my nails. I've got my fishing line. Got my drill and everything else is in between. That was the first learning curve. And a root was destroyed. Disaster or what? We're gonna keep going with the concept and let me unfurl this first. Okay, back in the shade we go. Seeing as that happens, I am now going to cut out squares so that I have the roots in sight. I have the hob filter material out of the way. That was not ideal, but we've learned something. All right, <laughs> take two. Make myself a guide hole. I took a very small drill bit so that I have a very tight hole that I'm now trying to screw this L hook or whatever it's called. Everybody that is more versatile with the terminology of tools, go ahead, correct me in the comments. Just so that this goes in tight. We're not going to win the award for best mounted orchid aesthetics. Totally out the window. 
if I can get away with <laughs> just wrecking one root that I can visibly see, I'm winning. I'm probably cracking roots in the back as well. And this is not a branching root system, so that's, that's something to be mindful of. But again, new root growth is imminent. We have one root tip that is not damaged. I'd like to tighten that just a tad more, but for now we're gonna leave it. Let's just see. Well, <laughs> she's on the mount. <laughs> I would like to get this flattened out. I can't cut into it because of the roots. And if I start doing a jagged thing, it looks even more horrible. So what I'm going to do, let's get you in a little bit closer because if we make a boo-boo, then hey, why not, right? Why not have it on camera? Did you expect this? <laughs> oh, I've got this visual in my head of this orchid without the white inorganic all around it. Just, you know, taking over the mount and the roots, but that is utopia, seeing as we are where we are. I mean, I was gonna always put the hob filter material underneath anyway, as a form of sphagnum moss for my climate, but yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be like this. However, <laughs> if it works, I don't care. As long as the orchid grows, eventually we'll probably be snapping off bit by bit, small little pieces. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, there's a curve, so we'll go in this way. Like that. I'm a little bit disturbed, I don't see my root tip anymore. You see how it breaks? But there are no roots in there, so I can take that off. Okay. Now, in case you're saying, well, she's too high, she's too this, honestly, my main concern here is as well for the winter that I can place her and lay her, like stand her up on a shelf. So the height is not the issue. There are so many more aesthetic wrongdoings here. Height is not the problem. I really want to find my root tip. I could get another one in back here, just to flatten this bit out a bit, bring that in just a tad. My root tip, Eureka, woohoo. We'll be following the progress of that one. If this one extends, that will be nice. Oh my goodness. Me and my inorganic growing. I do stand in my own way sometimes, don't I? I mean, do this two years ago and the orchid would look fabulous on this mount and already be a sight to behold. But there we go. <laughs> and so far I can still stand her upright. I may compromise roots as and when they grow, I don't know. The idea being now that the new root system kind of does its thing and gets the hint, you know? <laughs> Let's see. Maybe I'll win the Raspberry Award for Orchid Mounts. <laughs> okay, um, I know, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, not sure about it, but the orchid is attached. <laughs> that was the most important thing. Now we watch and observe. Actually, there's one more really important thing. I have to shuffle some orchids by the gate and see if the hook holds or if I have to feed a third wire through it. So 
<clears throat> Drum roll, I can't film this because my tripod doesn't go that high, but I'll show you at the end result and talk through it if anything untoward happens. Keep your fingers crossed right now. Uh, hopefully the next shot will be the orchid hanging on the gate without any issues and me not having to report anything. Um, yeah, unfortunate. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> All right, we're back. <laughs> You're still with me? Thank you once again for still being here. So what I didn't accommodate, the hook is strong enough, but what I did not accommodate was the depth of the curvature. So the gate is right here. That means this is not long enough for me to be able to pull it over the gate and hang the orchid up safely. I hope you can see and understand where I'm coming from. This is way too short. So we're gonna have to do some fandangling, and get a third wire in there, and hopefully get that right the first time. And note to self, for future mountings, I'm gonna test the mount without the orchid on the mount up against the gate or where it is going to hang, because <laughs> Now it's a little bit more fiddly and I can't move the mount all the way around the way I would like to, if I need to. Now I have an orchid to contend with and I'm not taking her off. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> that this is fundamental, something to test before putting the orchid on the mount. Doi. I was so wrapped up with how am I going to get the orchid on the mount without destroying too much of the structure and the roots. I never considered testing to see how the mount actually hangs against the gate. Seeing as I lifted it up and it was so, so strong, I thought, done, we're good to go. No. Check, check, double check, triple check, because I could have done this off camera and I may just switch the camera off so it doesn't overheat and show you the end result without poking my eyes out, of course. Maybe we've done enough. Let's go check. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had to bring the ladder and then I had to do a little fandangle thing over the top of the gate. At least the wire was big enough. Thank goodness for that. She is solid on that gate for the duration of the rest of the season. I will cross the bridge when it comes as to removing her and it's possible that I'm not going to be hanging her throughout the winter every single day when I bring her out for some light. Instead, she's just going to go somewhere where she can stand, where the mount itself can stand and yeah, I'm not doing this every single day during the winter, but she has to come outside. So, hmm, we have a little bit of an askew growth habit because of course the mount was flipped but it's done. She's on there. She's not going anywhere, hopefully. And if she is going to go anywhere, I would want the roots to do the moving. I know it's not the best thing aesthetically. I get it, but I hope it's going to work. That's the most important thing. And then, um, well, yeah, you can see I've got the next brassavola to do. I thought I might as well start with a big one, the complicated one, and see where the snags and irritations are. And I learned a lot, that drill thing, <laughs> yikes and I can still smell the spring freshness of the root that I destroyed. It's so strong, it's still in the air. Quel dommage! Anywho! <laughs> I'm not gonna say it because it could be interpreted wrong, but for a little bit of fun, maybe I should say it. Let the mounting begin. If <laughs> you've watched all the way through, thank you so, so much. Criticism, comments, opinions, anything is welcome. And I'll probably agree if you say, yeah, Nina, not your best work. <laughs> and I will say, you're right, it isn't. <laughs> Anywho, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate your support. I wish you a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. That's what you want to be doing, okay? <laughs> Don't make your hooks too soon. And then, you know, you, you, you get to test. You get to test and see what you want to do. And then you can do the curve and all of that business. So <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. <laughs>